Do you want to stay more focused on the right goals in your life or even just figure out what the right goals are for you? Do you want clarity? Do you want better work-life balance? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to Success Through Failure. Welcome to the Success Through Failure podcast, the show that reveals failure as your path to success. You'll listen to intriguing interviews with some of the most successful people on the planet and learn how their failures became a launchpad for success and how yours can too. Here's your host, former Division I All-American wrestler, former Division I head coach, speaker, and personal coach, Jim Harshaw. Welcome to another episode of Success Through Failure. This is your host, Jim Harshaw. We're diving into another solo episode. Man, they say you teach what you need. And man, did I need this episode. And if I need it, I know that there's other out, others out there who need it too. So we're going to dive into this because life right now for us is getting a little crazy. School started, which is great, right? Kids are off to school. All of them, all four of the kids are now in school, right? The youngest is in kindergarten now. Awesome. Full day of kindergarten here in Virginia. And that's great. So kids are all out the door. Allie started back to work. She's a part-time school counselor. And and you think, man, that's great. Kids are in school. Someone's basically babysitting them all day. Well, it's great, but that just means a lot of things are getting compressed into the evening. Plus, you have homework to throw in there now. And so kind of here's where we're at. We've got four kids. All of them are now in sports. This is the first year they've all been in sports. So things are a little bit nuts. And Isla, the youngest, she is six, and I am the, well, I was going to say the assistant coach, but I got promoted to associate head coach. I'm recruiting coordinator and scout team director uh, of of the six-year-old soccer team. I got the promotion here last week. You probably read it on ESPN. And um, But anyway, so I'm, I'm helping out coaching her soccer team. So that's two days a week. We got a practice and a game. Another one has, uh, let's see, Wyatt has baseball twice, two to three times a week, depending on the week. Jesse has three to four days of soccer a week. Eliana has field hockey twice a week, throw in some piano and other music lessons. And we have a minimum, minimum every week of a dozen things on our calendar, a minimum, minimum. That's like kind of baseline. And then it kind of goes up from there anywhere from like 12 to 20 things. On top of like eating food, right? And cleaning up the house and everything else you got to do. Hopefully have a conversation with Allie somewhere in there. So things are like maxed out, crazy. And so if you, you kind of add, you have all that, that's going to be our new baseline. And then a couple of things happened. So the water heater went down. It's a long story. Uh, water heater went down and it's been down for a while, over a week. Cold water. Yeah. Cold showers. It's good for you though, right? We got a water issue around the foundation of the house. The car battery died, and this is becoming a recurring issue. I got a couple things I still got to fix over at my rental property. And it's like, holy cow, right? And um, I've got a couple awesome opportunities coming up with clients. And and it's like, I've got to fit all of it in, right? And I, I don't have any way of adding more hours to the day. So yeah, it's gotten a little bit overwhelming, Right, Allie and I haven't been able to connect as much, and it's overwhelming. It's flat out crazy, overwhelming, stressful. Whatever, however you want to say it, whatever you feel, I feel. That's I know you felt this way. Maybe you feel this way right now, but it's crazy, right? And particularly so right now for us, for for all these reasons, and then you know, all the other stuff that's going on in life, right? You know, issues with different members of the family and just stuff, right? And so how do you deal with this? When I took the notes and prepared for this podcast, it was actually a week ago when I was really, really in the middle of craziness. And right now, as I record this, I've moved out of that. So that's actually one of the things is like realizing that this is a temporary thing, right? And so I get a chance right now to sit down and record this and talk to you about the overwhelm that you're feeling right now. And if you're not feeling it right now, you're going to feel it next week or next month or or, or really darn soon. So I just want to give you some ideas. Uh, I have a bunch of tools in my arsenal because I'm a coach. 
because I talk about this stuff a lot, because I'm helping people with this a lot. And so thankfully, I've got a lot of tools in my tool belt that help me move through the overwhelm with much less stress, much less anxiety, because I preach this stuff. I teach this stuff. It's amazing. I know. I remember when I was coaching wrestling, or I'm sorry, when I was competing in wrestling, and I started working summer camps. So when I was competing in college, for example, and I started working these summer camps where I had to now teach junior high, you know, middle school and high school kids and younger even wrestling and wrestling moves. And I had to tell them, you know, when you're taking a shot on the legs, you've got to keep your head up, right? And I'm thinking to myself, wait, maybe I need to do a better job of that, right? So it reinforces this stuff to you. So it's so, I'm so blessed to be able to talk about this stuff and help people with it and coach them through it because it forces me to to learn this stuff and to be accountable to actually execute it and do it. So I started writing down all of the things that I do or have done to help me in these moments of overwhelm or things that have helped my clients through these moments and in seasons of overwhelm. And I guarantee you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a lot. Okay. I'm going to give you 18. I have 18 things here right now. Some of them you're going to be like, Oh yeah, I know that I do that. Some of them you're going to be like, Hmm, that's interesting. Let me, let me try that. Um, but what I need you to do is not get overwhelmed trying to do 18 things. Pick one, okay? Pick one for now, and then and maybe pick a second one. If you feel like you got that one under control, maybe pick three, right? Don't, don't try to do all 18 of these. Um, these are all, all 18 of them are functional. Some of them are just kind of like ways to go about your life, um, but other ones are actual tactics, right? Uh, but again, don't, don't add this to your overwhelm because sometimes, sometimes, this can be overwhelmed, right? Me giving you more advice, more stuff, more thoughts. Like sometimes I have to turn this stuff off. Um, so I stop feeding my head with too much stuff, make me feel like I have to do everything. And I'm here to tell you, you don't need to do everything. All right. But I'm going to give you some ideas, some things to marinate in your mind and, and, and grab a couple of these and they'll help you. They'll min- these are the things that minimize overwhelm, right? All right, here we go. Number one, this is the best. I love this one. Identify What's important now? W I N. What's important now? Right? You might have a to do list. Hopefully, you have a to do list. If you don't do that, right? Write everything down, put it into a list, and that'll kind of that'll give you clarity there. That'll did that. That alone will will help you um, feel a little less overwhelmed when you can see everything. But take that stuff and say, okay, wait a second. I can't do twenty five things right now, but maybe I can do three. For my clients, I actually send them a, a, a stack of post-it notes that I had created that has a, there's three lines and I'm sorry, five lines and then a checkbox on the left side of each line. And so you can write five things down for you to do today and you have a little checkbox where you can check them off as you do them. Five, right? Maybe you only do four or three or two, maybe it's one, right? What's the one thing that's important now? And sometimes we want to work on everything so we don't get to work on anything because we feel like as soon as I start working on this, the fire to my right and the fire to my left, they're going to be burning. So I can't quite get focused on this thing in front of me because I know there's these other things that I should be doing. And if I focus on the one on my right, there's these other two that I should be doing. I focus on the one on my left, there's these other two I should be doing. Just focus on one thing. All you can do is one thing right now. Okay. So identify what's important now. Push your to-do list aside, get a post-it note, and write down the one or the two or the three things. That's it. Nothing else exists. I know they all exist. Push them out of your mind. Just focus on those, okay? That's number one. Number two, get clarity. Journaling, a brain dump, creating that to-do list. Dump it all out. Get clarity. Get clarity on what is important now, right? Number one. But also, what all is it that's, that's swirling around your mind that's causing this overwhelm, right? A lot of times when we can like name it, it helps us. So one of the tactics that my wife has taught me about working as a counselor with young children is you have to help them name a feeling. Like They have a feeling of maybe they're mad or they're sad or they're frustrated or whatever. You help them name that feeling. And instead of it just being a bad feeling in your sort of body and mind and soul and gut... It's like, oh, this is a thing. It's called frustration. Or, oh, this is a thing. It's called, uh, you know, 
having 10 things to do, right? It, it's called overwhelm. Like, and you, you, you write all of it down, do your brain dump, and go, oh, okay, this is all the stuff that's stressing me out right now. And then you go back to number one. Let me pick one or two or three things to work on. So number one, what's important now? Number two, get clarity. Brain dump, journaling, writing your to-do list, et cetera. Number three, get organized. I already talked about kind of organizing the stuff that's swirling around in your head, but also go organize your desk. You know, you, you, of course, you can take it too far and you can do that for an hour and just organize and, and never actually get to doing any real work. Set a timer if you have to. But clean your desk or clean your kitchen, right? These things help, they, they create overwhelm. They make us feel stressed out, right? So there is research that shows that organizing your desk is a valuable use of time and increases productivity, right? And that's number three, get organized. Number four, hire someone. Talk about getting organized. Hire somebody to organize, right? Hire somebody to, to clean your house. Hire somebody to, to babysit for you. So you can actually go get some work done or go work out or whatever. Right? You know, hire a babysitter. Hire a pet sitter. Someone to take your, you got to take your dog for a walk? Hire somebody. You got to co- cut your grass? Hire somebody, right? Spend the 30 or 40 bucks to hire somebody to cut your grass once if you need to just to get some space, right? Go to upwork.com. That's what I do. I've got a bunch of folks who work for me, three actually folks who work for me that help me do stuff because I need help. And so do you. So hire somebody, hire, hire somebody, delegate, shoot, get an intern if you have to, right? Um, go to a local university or high school and get somebody to help you uh, create an internship and they can put on their resume. All right, number five, go to coffee. Go out and grab a cup of coffee with a good friend. Let them know you're struggling and that you need an ear. You don't need a solution. You need an ear and that you need to vent. Sometimes we just feel like we need heard, we need to be heard. You ever, you ever have one of those conversations where it's like, man, you're really bent out of shape after this conversation and you sit back at your desk and you write up this long, nasty email and you go, I'm not going to send it yet. I'm just going to let me reread this and think about it. And then you let it set for like, and then you come back like an hour later or a day later or whatever. And you feel like you never feel like sending it and you don't send it. You ever done that? <laughs> you just write it all out and you're like, man, I can't wait to hit send. I'm going to be, I'm going to get them, man. I'm going to tell them. I got it all listed out right here, right here in the email. And then when you're done writing it, you go, man, I kind of feel better. And then you never get around to sending it. That's, that's venting, right? We just need to get it out sometimes. And it's great to do with a friend uh, who, who we can vent to. All right, number six, be still. Be still. I know that's the last thing you want to do when you're overwhelmed. But just for a minute, if all you can do is this, five, four, three, two, one, I've, I've talked about this before, this sort of real quick relaxation method where you go five, four, three, two, one, take a deep breath in, and then, on the, and then you count down five, four, three, two, one, and then you just relax your lower legs on the five count, your upper legs on the four count, your torso on the three count, your arms on the two count, and on the one count, your head, neck, and above. So five, four, three, two, one, boom, just that, that quick relaxation. It's a good, quick, easy reset. And I was just actually had a mastermind call today uh, with a handful of clients. And one of the guys brought this up. I've I've heard this quote before, but I haven't heard it for a while, but it was was great, really important for this, this conversation here, the work you and I are having is uh, don't just do something, stand there. So sometimes we actually need to just stop, right? Obviously I've talked about the productive pause. If you've been listening to this for any length of time, but sometimes we need to pause, all right? Okay, that's number six, be still. Number seven, realize that you have it better than many others. Realize that maybe, just maybe, things aren't so bad. You know, if I'm overwhelmed because I've got to take my kids to soccer and baseball and field hockey, et cetera, you know what, my goodness, I've got four healthy kids. Man, my blessed, right? Realize that you have it better than someone else. You know, realize that the stress, maybe it's because you have a, you know, it's at your job. You got a job, right? I get issues with my house right now. I've got a house. Like what a great problem to have, right? A lot of people in the world would love to have that problem. Any problems that you have that I have. That's number seven, just that realization, right? That's not a thing to do. That's just, you know, realize it, right? I've got it, man. I've got it better than others. This is gratitude. Speak these things out loud, right? You can... Say, hey, I'm grateful for my job. I got problems at my job. I'm grateful for my job. I got problems with my house. I'm grateful for my house. I got problems with my car. I'm grateful that I have a car. All right, that's number seven. 
Number eight, realize this is just a season. This too shall pass. It's just a season, right? I told you about this overwhelm. When, I, when this really crushed me was last week. Now here I am just a week later going, man, I, you know, I got things under control. I feel like so much better than I did when I started putting the notes together for this episode. All right. Number nine, that was eight. Number nine. Here we go. Turn off the media. Turn it off, man. I talked about this a little bit already. Sometimes podcasts and books about personal development lead to more overwhelm, right? Like, oh, I got to do this and I got to do this and I got to do this and I got to fold my clothes like Marie Kondo says. And you know, you got to do all these things. Like, no, you don't. You don't like just turn it off, especially social media. My goodness, you don't have to have the perfect looking family that goes on the perfect vacation in the perfect car, just like all the people you see on social media. You don't need that crap. Turn it off. That's number nine. Number 10, set your vacation responder in your email. Oh, I love this, man. Even if I'm like out of the office for a half a day or something, I try to turn it on because it's like, if I, if I see 10 emails come in my inbox, it like just ramps up the overwhelm, right? Ramps up that, oh, crap, I got to get to this, right? But if I know that they got an autoresponder that says, hey, I'm out of the office, I'll get back to you when I can, I'm just like, okay, I, know, I don't have to get to that. It like reduces the, the urgency of that. So use that vacation autoresponder. Even if it's you're like, man, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm really deeply focused on a project right now. I'm not responding to emails promptly, uh, but I'll get back to you as soon as possible. That's number 10, vacation responder, that out-of-office responder. Number 11, realize that at night, everything feels bigger. All of your problems, all of your stresses, all of your anxiety, all that stuff feels bigger at 2 a.m. Do you know why? Because humans are wired to feel this way. Nighttime, you're supposed to know that there is danger out there, right? And you're sleeping in a cave and the fire's gone out and you hear a little noise. You're supposed to have an elevated status, uh, elevated alertness. We're wired this way. This is the way we, we were designed. This is the way we've evolved. And when you, when you realize this, when you go, okay, wait a second. Right now, I'm laying here staring at the ceiling at 2 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. I can't get back to sleep. And I'm just thinking over and over and over of this problem. That problem, as soon as you get out of bed, as soon as the sun rises, it shrinks. It does and it will. So I just want you to put this seed in the back of your mind for the next time you're laying there staring at the ceiling just have the peace of mind, a tiny peace of mind helping you go, okay, I, I know this really, really feels stressful and both logically and emotionally, this thing feels really big right now. Just know that when you wake up, it's going to be more manageable. I don't know why, you know, it's, you know, maybe because you can take action in the morning, maybe because the sun's up and we're just kind of wired to go, okay, I can see all the dangers around me. Whatever it is, it feels more manageable in the morning. 12, that was number 11. Number 12, take action. Take action, anything. Just do one thing. Remember I talked about W-I-N, when, you know, what's important now? Just do one of those things. One, action creates momentum and that makes you feel better. I know that taking action on one of those things can feel, you know, bring about that feeling of I'm not doing that other thing so it kind of paralyzes you. Just be, be aware of that. Be mindful of that feeling because if you're not, you're not going to do anything a lot of times. You just get paralyzed and start surfing the internet. And then you feel even crappier because you did that. But do one thing. Just one. Just even if it's a little thing, do it. Okay, number 12. That's the 12. Number 13, say no. Learn to say no. I'm not going to go too deep into this because I go, I cover this pretty in-depth, uh, episode number 150. So it's jimharshawjr.com slash 150, episode 150. Uh, or you just grab the action plan. Just go to jimharshawjr.com slash action. Get the action plan for 150 if you want the cliff notes from that episode. I got scripts on how to say no. How to say no. My favorite one is this. You know, if I say yes to this, I have to say no to something else. And that's probably going to be my family. And I'm not, re- I'm not ready to say no to my family right now. People get that right? Or if you just leave the family part out, you say, listen, if I say yes to this, I have to say no to something else. And you know, there's just nothing on my plate right now that I can say no to. So learn to say no, no, no. I got a client, man. We just, Jerry and I were just working the other day on this and 
he actually wrote down a, like 10 things that he's like saying yes to right now. And he went through all of them and said, okay, I got to say yes to this, yes to this. Uh, I can say no to this. I can say no to this. I got to say yes to this. And he went down through them and he picked like three or four things out and he's, he's going to say no to. Like stuff that he, he wants to do. It's an opportunity. It's like, it's not a bad, these are bad things. And like doing drugs. It's like serving his community and, and doing different things. But it's like right now, when he says yes to that, he's saying no to other things that are just higher priority. All right, number 14. I've got a bunch of focus tactics that I use. These are different tools in my tool belt. I, there's like a you know 15 or so, 18 of them, I think. And you can use these. These are tips, tools, tactics on how to stay focused and get really focused, deep work done. Uh, I'm not going to go into those right now. If you want to listen to that one, or actually, if you want to just download the action plan for that. It's just go to jimharshajr.com slash action. Again, punch in your email, you'll get access to that resource. So it's right at the top of the page. It's all about these different, fo- but 18 ways to stay focused. So you can use those, use some of these tactics like the Pomodoro technique, for example. Anyway, I'm going to move on from that because you can get access to that one. So uh, finding ta- using these tactics to stay focused. All right. Number 15. This is a great one. I've done this accidentally. It's kind of how I discovered this one. But when I do it, it just is this beautiful, pleasant surprise of like, wow, I got extra time here. Build in white space. Number 15 is build in white space. When you look at your calendar for next week or the following week or a month from now, block off a two-hour segment, a lunch break, block it off so it doesn't get taken up or, or block off a half a day or a Saturday morning or whatever it is, block it off so it doesn't get taken up. You know, if you're working at a place and you know, you have, you're on Outlook, I think it's, you know, I don't know if it's the Enterprise Edition or, or Outlook 365, but everybody can see your calendar or your, what's accessible and your, what's open on your calendar. And there's, oh, Jim's free at this time. Boom, they'll plug in a calendar, they'll, they'll plug in a meeting there. Well, protect your time. Build in some white space. Build in white space for, man, I don't work out enough. Well, build in white space for working out. Put it on your calendar for two, three weeks from now, a month from now. Or just block it off for, for doing nothing. You know, you'll find yourself going, oh, okay, I got time to breathe. Maybe I can work out. Maybe I can go for a walk. Maybe I can just get caught up on email. Maybe, maybe I can get caught up on whatever. I can do some journaling. Okay, that's number 15. Build in white space. That's a physical action you have to take. It won't happen for you. So we talked about just picking a few of these out of here. Take action on that might be a good one, right? You do this once and it's gonna like it's like planting this little seed, this tree's gonna grow, and man, you'll get that you'll get that gift, you know, in a week or two, three weeks from now. And you look at your calendar and you go, Oh, I got like two hours blocked off to do nothing right now. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. Number sixteen. You're not gonna like this one, I'm sorry. Let a ball drop. Let a ball drop. I did this just Actually, last week when I was taking notes for this, I remember I did it that morning. I'm training for a Spartan race right now, and you know I'm ramping up my training. I, you know, I don't. It's like a, it's an eight mile one with like 26 obstacles or something like that. I'm on a team, and I'm man, I want to like help the team get great results. And I didn't train that morning. You know why? I had stuff to do. That was higher priority. I'm like you know what? I'm going to let that ball drop for this morning. Episode number. 211, 211 with Eric Albright. This is a guy who he's a client of mine. Just I had him on because he just had this this dramatically transformed life through following some of the processes that I teach. And he really goes through all those and how those helped him. Pretty powerful episode of a, of a real life dude just transformed his life from security guard to just uh, an amazing new life that he's created just in the last couple, two years or so. And he talks about how he went, how he went about this really fun episode. But, but he was in the hospital. He had to go to the hospital after doing a workout. Long story, he actually talks a little bit about it. And it's totally out of the blue, boom, all of a sudden he's like maxed out, you know, got tons of work on his plate. And then all of a sudden he has this random thing happen and, and he's in the hospital for seven days when he was super busy. He had no choice but to let a bunch of balls drop. And guess what? It turned out okay. Think if you had to go to the hospital or just take your car to the shop, Right. You'd find time. You would make time for that. And guess what? About a week later, you'd be caught up. Right? Let a ball drop. Number 17, get physical. Go get in a good workout. Go eat a healthy meal. Get some extra sleep. Take a power nap. 
drink some extra water, or even just take a deep breath. Do something physical. One of my clients, uh, he does this re- really cool thing. It's called the, um, the well, it's, it's based off of something called the dive response. But you take basically an ice bag. Well, let me back up a little bit. If you jump into a go jump into an ice cold lake right now, your body would shut down and your mind, you you know, your body would start shutting down, you know, blood flow to the extremities to protect your internal organs uh, and your your brain. You get the same experience if you take a cold shower. If you switch the shower from hot to cold, I don't know about you, but whenever I do that, I kind of lose my train of thought and I'm just focused on like, (sighs) like dealing with this cold that's hit my body, right? So it kind of clears my mind. It's a reset of my mind. You get the same response if you take a cold, like a bag of ice, just an ice pack and hold it on your face for a minute. Your blood, your heart rate drops significantly and your body just does a reset, right? You let, it's like an emotional reset. You stop dwelling on and thinking about the things you're thinking about. And it's this awesome reset. So this is kind of another thing to help you get physical. That was number 17. Last one, number 18. Get a doc. Go to a doctor. If you have real anxiety or real stress issues, maybe you need to see a doctor. Maybe you need help. Maybe you need professional help. Maybe you need medication. But there's doctors out there that can help you with stuff like this. All right? More people go to those doctors than you'll ever realize. But take advantage of those folks. There's, there's professionals out there that can help you. So these are 18 things I just gave you. If you want to get the, the cliff notes, go to jimharshawjr.com slash action. That's jimharshawjr.com slash action. Tons of awesome episodes and content there. Uh, the cliff notes from all of them, the action plans from all those. Listen, if, if you got any benefit out of this, I'm going to ask you one favor. Could you share this? Could you share this with a friend? Just send them a text with the episode number and, and tell them, hey, check out Success Through Failure. Check out this week's episode of Success Through Failure. Or if it's in the future, you're referring back to it, just tell them to check out this episode. Um, or if you haven't already, uh, uh, if you could offer a review on iTunes, a rating and review on iTunes, that's awesome. That kind of stuff helps other people find the podcast. And listen, if you do none of those, that's okay. I appreciate you listening and being here. I hope this has impacted your life in some small way and has, is going to help you deal with the overwhelm that you're dealing with right now, or just give you uh, some more arrows in your quiver for whenever that overwhelm hits you again sometime soon. Have a great rest of your week. And as always, until next time, take the time to get clear on your goals and embrace failure as a stepping stone on your path to success. Thank you.